everyone. All right, welcome everyone. Journey into the Unknown, book 15, Secrets of the Unknown, the sixth and final installment. <sighs> <laughs> welcome yeah. everyone so this is chapters 35 to 40 all right welcome julia just getting connected in all right here we are three nice. days after christmas hello julia that's better hi oh i love that sweater you look wonderful thank you very nordic <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, take it away, guys. <laughs> well, I must say, I was a little um, uh, puzzled by this, by these last first, these next five chapters. It was like, there was sort of like a, um, uh, the other ones, you, you know, we're, we're so used to being um, shocked. And these didn't shock me. But these just sort of left me kind of like, what's going to happen like it's like it was sort of like there, there, there's sort of a, a, a um, an indication that um, there's there's a reckoning that's going to be coming due and yet at the same time it just sort of leaves it hanging there's a reckoning but no idea as to is it you know the next 10,000 years or you know it when 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 is this all going to transpire and if it's not going to be for the next till the next 10,000 years. I mean, why tell us now? I mean, I don't know. It just left me kind of puzzled. So why do you think we've been told now? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I, and I, yeah, I, I was just completely a little bit puzzled by this, by these five chapters. There was nothing that was, you know, really um, shocking about it or, um, um, he, I mean, he's been hinting all along, you know, that the negative has kind of like outweighed the positive. And um, but now he's saying, well, there's a reckoning that is due and and there's going to be sort of like a, the separation of the wheat from the shaft kind of thing. But, you know, I was I was hoping there was going to be some kind of indication in the last chapter 40 or something that's saying, give us some idea as to um when this was going to be happening, but or what we can expect, but it's just sort of just left. Mm -hmm. I and right. Mm -hmm. it, it might, but perhaps it's not so much the event or a event, it's how we respond in every moment of being. And there's no time. But if we do, if we work backwards, if we go to 40, the last chapter, you know, it's God is saying, I need you as much as you need me. And he's, and so um, verse five in chapter 40 is our plan to fix our plan is drastic. And all aspects of the divine hierarchy are fully committed to it. Will it be easy? No. Will it succeed? We hope so. But there are no guarantees in creation. Very little has developed this plan. There have been good surprises and very unpleasant and disappointing ones. The one and only promise I can make is that we are in this together. And that's what gives me great comfort that I, I feel I won't be abandoned. But the reckoning is, is maybe an event that sorts the wheat from the chaff, it, it is most, most likely, but also it's us taking responsibility and ownership for our own personal part um, in making a choice. We're coming to that, to that point where are we eternal children of an eternal mother, father, or are we invested in the worldly way, in the worldly um, systems, the worldly system. But, you know, throughout this last installment, in its implications of sorting the wheat from the chaff, um, it does speak of our times. It speaks of 
the second coming of Christ. We are the second coming of Christ, right? And in that sorting, it's the the hardened hearts from the hearts that show mercy, forgiveness, uh, mercy, well, forgiveness, love, and compassion, right? And I did kind of go to some of our scripture references. So, you know, two men will be in the field, one will be taken, one will be left. Two women will be grinding, one will be taken, one will be left. And that's all about the second coming of Christ. But we have been told, you know, and when we only understood from the Bible's point of view, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of different interpretations. There's the rapture, there's, but we have been told we are the second coming of Christ. So we're in that time now. And God says, I need to cart compartmentalize myself i need to put in containers those that and doesn't he judy we well, discussed let's, let's, yeah let's go through the chapters and yes, through, go through. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there but i'm glad right. you went to the end um lorraine first let's do that finish that and then go back <clears> to the beginning because i want to ask judy now how she felt about that paragraph you read which is um there are no guarantees Will it be easy? No. How did that land with you, given what you said earlier about wanting to know when? And Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe I set myself up to be um, kind of disappointed because there was no, um, you know, definitive answer at the end. Uh -huh. Which and means that, that you're expecting somebody, somebody, someone to tell you, right? Yeah. And yeah. what this paragraph that Lorraine read is saying is this is a co-creation. Ah, okay. This is the basis of all of this. The whole of journey, and certainly a course of love as well, has been conditioning us to recognize ourselves and step accept who we really are. So the other thing that Lorraine read was the um, thing of what she spoke of, actually, was the time thing. There is no time. It's right. within you. It's here now in this present moment. And there's been a lot in journey that says, you won't even know it's happened. The Fifth Avenue chapter, for example, it's happening. And our responsibility is to be within, to pay attention within and externally. It's very interesting that uh, Rami has mentioned it several times about applying the art of thought to everything right this minute, the art of thought, to feeling into all of that questioning and concern and wondering and disappointment as a human being and breathing into that place that knows you're a divine being, multidimensional divine being, feeling that relationship, that flow between the two with compassion and love and responding with love and gratitude. So go on, Judy. And, uh... No, I, I was just thinking, you know, that listening to what you were saying, I think you're absolutely right. And that um, if it's happening now and it, it's maybe, <laughs> Maybe uh, I'm, instead of thinking of this is going to be like a, a big dramatic event, it's just in little tiny ways, maybe. Just the linear mind wanting yes. to go in a linear fashion. Yeah. And that is not yeah. who we are. So, exactly. <laughs> welcome, Irene and uh, Jude. Hi, with your Christmassy lights back there. <laughs> and, uh, oh, Irene's disappeared, but she's on. She's on. That's great. So any quick comments about uh, where Lorraine uh, read from the last chapter? And then I'd like to kind of invite anyone to get anything off their chests immediately. And then we'll start going through the six chapters. Invite anyone to say whatever they need to say right now. Judy, I can't, Jude, I can't hear you. Yeah. Okay, there you go. I to wish everybody a happy new year before I oh. have <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, we still have. Things, the things that you discuss every week in this program are from what you sent out last Saturday. 
Uh, uh, and yes, yes, the, the installment of journey secrets into the unknown. Of course, arrival drops in and other things drop in. But and last week we talked about shock to the system as well. But yes, I was just confused. <laughs> can you do you want to ask a question, Lance? No. Okay. Well, if we can help alleviate the confusion, that would be uh, good. Well, but, Judy, yeah. um, if if Christina doesn't send us a newsletter on that Saturday with the installments, we need to find every Saturday she's been releasing an installment. We have to go to the Journey website to get the last one. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you have it, but that's where you'll find it, the 35 to 40. Yeah. All right. Want to start at the beginning then of this installment? Sure. Okay, let's go back to uh, the beginning then of this installment, which is chapter 35. Oh, it's 11 11, which is, means it's the perfect time to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I just opened my iPad and it said 11 11. All right, so here we go, chapter 35. Let me quickly say that the two things that really jumped out at me was the experience. <laughs> of the word that was used was endure. God's talking about the pain and the how it's felt to endure all of these things. Um, let me see if I can find the sentence. Um, number, this, number five, number five um, 35. Uh, yes, I'm not <coughs> getting to that page yet. Let's see. Okay, five. I've been willing to have or to endure these experiences, to discover what was on the other side. And the containment units, which you mentioned just now, Lorraine, which took us back here, which is perfect. The enduring, I have to say, I, I kind of felt it in my own experience. Mm. Of always going back with love, with family members, you know, certain people in my life. And that's how it felt been willing to endure and now it's time any uh, responses to this chapter Any i questions? just felt that i just felt that god is telling us uh, you know i i took a i was taking a risk um where does he say that always has been the question I have been investigating. Can mm -hmm. my extensions, my creations, find their way around mistaken beliefs and perceptions? Right. Since right. everything lives inside me, my, etern my internal state has had elements that are contrary to my own nature, mm -hmm. selfishness, greed, and manner of judgment and harm. And that's what he's had to endure, right? right. That, right. that is... He's done. I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> and remembering that the purpose of all of that in the first place, this business of investigating the question, was to grow more love. Yeah. So I, I want us to also remember that there have been billions of souls who have overcome all these things and grown in love. You know, some of us are right here. Some of us are listening to this, reading these books. I'm not saying we've done any of it all of the time, but we've managed to overcome human um, greed, selfishness, all the things that are listed here, a lot of the time. And every time we have, every moment that we have has grown love. So uh, I think for me as a human being, feeling deeply into this pattern that is being described here from my own life, what has been hardest has been not having anyone to talk to about mm -hmm. what was happening because if I spoke to anyone about any of the abuse that I was enduring, you know, choosing to in my family members, it would immediately be a question of taking sides, judging, criticizing, but I wasn't speaking for that reason. I just needed to describe it and sort of like, so I didn't go insane to have someone witness and then join me in that place of knowing the love, that we love these souls. And that's why we keep going back. So it's beautiful that this, this installment has talked about that quite a bit mm -hmm. and saying even that there is a limit to. Okay, anyone else, Julia? 
anything? You know, I, I was really struck by that also that um, the question that has been, you know, this has always been the question I've been investigating. Um, that that just really struck me. Um, it just really, I just found it very interesting that that's, that is sort of um, been, it's, it, it was interesting to me to feel this I am presence having a curiosity. You know what I mean? That's how I, that's how I experienced reading that sentence. It was like, oh, that's been your sort of um, curious wonder question or discover wanting thing that you've wanted to discover. Mm -hmm. And, and I felt very, um, I, I felt uh, a kinship in feeling that quality in this I am presence in God. Um, it made me feel even more in relationship um, because it was a similar, you know, the way that we have our own curiosities. <laughs> so God is more lives, human. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly God feels more human. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it just was very, very interesting to me. Yeah. And um, perhaps humans can feel more like God. I think that's what exactly. it's really about. Yeah. yeah. And I think the thing I keep reminding myself is the purpose of it, because we can't not create is what's being said. Right. And so there's always these godheads are all investigating and working symbiotically. Oh, what about that? Let's try that. Oh, how about this? You know, what was it? A, a tiger on a zebra's head and, you know, a body, things like that. That's right. <laughs> so uh, it's an investigation, but the purpose being to grow more now. It's mm -hmm. always about growing more. Mm -hmm. To strengthen. Yeah, the word that was used a lot is strengthen, to strengthen. Yeah. And love. the experiment was a risk because the ratios were so high. Mm hmm you know, the freedom. Yeah. Jude, you wanted to speak, right? Jude? I was just thinking about, you know, you <laughs> said we were created in God's image, but a lot of people have made God into our, what we wanted it to be. And it seems like it's pretty much going that way with all the, um, because I, I don't know, my whole concept of what God is or isn't has changed so much over the years. But, you know, we always thought God was perfect and absolutely, you know, infallible and create what he created was absolutely perfect. And so now it's, you know, kind of turning that around on its head, which is fine because I don't think it was, uh, I, I, it, it's getting cleared up. But um, so I just find it interesting that um, how it's just doing a turnaround again in my mind, my thinking. And the turnaround, the second turnaround is? Well, the first one is, you know, you know that God is perfect, created man in his image, but it seems as though man actually made God and the, what they wanted him to be, right. him to be, you know, that old man up in the sky with the white beard. So now it seems like it's coming around coming again yeah. to what might be. Truth. Coming back to the truth, and and unfortunately, that would have worked if man, had, if we had realized our true selves, but it, we were creating God in a false image. Yeah. Yeah. And this whole phrase, human nature, you know, people say, oh, that's just human nature. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, also just to uh, dovetail on both what you said, Christina and Julia, about um, you know, you had no one to share with, you know, the things you had to endure and um, God becoming more human. Um, when he, this chapter begins with, I am the most high, I am the source of all love. It made me think of the special presentation that we got in October where um, I am introduces himself and he comes to us in these chapters to confide in us almost to say this is where we're at this oh, is what's interesting and, and i have spoken to nobody before but i'm 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 telling you i'm telling you the true story of creation and here's where we're at and here's what we have to do sort of and that blows me away um but i said to Ju judy last night when we were in conversation you know if i were to get on my soapbox to preach and say that god is telling us 
and he's speaking to us. You know, they would take me to the edge of the cliff and throw me <laughs> off, right? So right, we, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, that's it's amazing, Lorraine, what you just said. I mean, I hadn't made that connection. Yeah, that's, that, that is, is so really beautiful. Great. It, it is. So it's such an intimate thing. These yeah. so, so they would be so outrageous. Right. If I just told some members of my family, well, I am is right. speaking, giving us messages, but he's so he's so concerned and he's confiding in us. And, you know, we, we have the power to move forward and co-create with him and we get to choose what Path. Anyway, let's continue. Right, so we right. can and right. and it is it's so that's so beautiful because it's like this final installment, chapters thirty five to forty. This came in mid October, I think it was very recently. I think I think it was mid October. Yeah. It was October fourteenth. Yeah. Is, yeah. is so, when. Uh, yeah. So being able to speak to us this way is because there is a, a sort of a relationship of trust that says we're not going to go oh my god you're not god i hate you you know you're not going to take me right. no we're going to say you know the other way around you know um oh in that case poo poo you know there's no god i just have to do whatever i want to do and let you know no it's it's we're in a place of equal co-creation and flow mm. right. so all right <laughs> Let me just go on to the next chapter and hopefully others will get a chance to speak to. So where are we? Chapter 36. Anyone want to start there? What stuck out to them? For me, it was the word compartmentalizing. Yes. Oh it was like, God. oh my God, even God has to create boundaries. No. <laughs> yeah. Surprised <laughs> me. Yeah. So go ahead, Julia. Or anyone it, it just surprised me to see that. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's like this whole life experience I've had also, it's like I felt like it was wrong to not speak to someone, not out of hate or fear, but just enough. And be in this neutral, upright position that's neither attacking nor being a victim, but simply enough. You know, that took me a long time to get to thinking that love was all inclusive and flowing and yeah, keep going back. And, and in, the, in the, the next paragraph, I think um, it says, they say, we love these souls. We love the souls I speak of, you know, because he spoke, they've spoken fairly firmly about they've got to be held accountable, blah, blah, blah. We can't allow the horrors the world have endured to continue. Some get even harder and more unruly. We love the souls we speak of. And again, the word endured, you know, and it's like you said, enough. Yeah. Um, where does it say, we cannot allow the horrors of the world. Yeah. Oh, we cannot allow the horrors the worlds have endured to continue. But it's, uh, it's just, you know, as you were saying, about this uh, compartmentalization, but you know that 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 was a realization I had a few years ago, where um, having you know there's certain people that I have kept at arm's length, people that I've um, would feel I would that I would say are unsafe, and and to me, and I've kept them at arm's length, and I realized that actually that it's actually quite loving really to me and that person because of the fact that sometimes victims and victimizers don't know a victimizer doesn't doesn't know their boundaries they're really they're really not aware of where they're intruding on someone so it's a very loving thing because until they get in contact with where they're abusing and where they're actually invading another person and that a victim also until they're able to get in contact with that, those boundaries are really, really loving. So, yeah, it's, it's I would, I, I, I don't find this so abnormal that what's being spoken of here, this, you know, sending, you know, cutting people off, cutting whatever's not helpful off, because it, it just goes through its own process eventually, right? Of yeah. rediscovery. 
I don't know. It's it's true, Kevin. I I exactly. That's absolutely the right thing to do for 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 us for me too when I was at a particular stage. But I feel there's a little bit subtle difference here, because when you use the word unsafe, there is a little bit of fear still involved when we say something is unsafe. For me, anyway, this feels more like we are so, God is so clear and loving and all of everything. And at the same time, knows that there are some boundaries to be set up. And that's different from saying I'm setting up boundaries because I'm not ready to deal with that person or, you know what I'm saying? That's, it is a little different. And that is the subtlety that it took me a long time to get to. So that knowing that it was a neutral, divine zero point neutrality that I stood in and not cutting off someone for fear of what might happen if I spent time with them. Because I know I could spend time with these people. And as the Bible says, why cast pearls before swine? <laughs> I know that sounds a little arrogant, but it's really how it feels. Because I don't want to fight. I don't want to argue. I don't want to defend. I don't need to explain. But I'm here. You know, open. And allowing it to be what it is. I, I think when you, um, this, this is the, basically he's talking about tough love. And when you <clears throat> are in a situation where tough love is appropriate, what you're doing is, you're trying to open that other person's eyes to say, look, you know, you've got a choice here. You can either continue on in your way with the status quo being what's going to be happening, or you can change. And, and it's giving them an opportunity. It's trying to, it's loving them in the way to show them that there is a different way of they can be so that they can become more loving. And it's up to them to make the choice whether they want to be more loving or not. So it's, 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 it's still loving them, but it's loving them in a, in, in, in a way that is, is um, allowing you uh, to um, put a boundary and say, look, I can't accept any more negativity. It's, it's, you just have, we just have to be more positive here. And if you're not, well, I, there, there's nothing that I can do. It's your choice. Right, right. And it's up to us to be examining ourselves constantly within to be sure we're not carrying any of those things around judgment or fears or protections or, or whatever. And that's a constant ongoing. Yeah, Jude, oh, she's left, okay. Yes, of course, she has a half an, um, a meeting at 8.30 and she goes to, yeah. And of course, we, of course we all, because of who we are, make mistakes. <laughs> 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 no do you i can't remember when i lost it. <laughs> okay shall we just go on and somebody uh speak about chapter 37 they're pretty short chapters um pretty strong but pretty short so chapter 37 talks about the sorting and saving the premier canvases from destruction so from that sentence i have surmise that earth is one of the premier canvases um, and there are others and I am is becoming far less tolerant and more selective it is time and it is a shame that it has come to this you know it was so weird that was <clears throat> almost the very sentence I wrote at the beginning of COVID lockdown <clears throat> at first I was just going out there doing the practical things have supporting neighbors friends whatever but as I wrote blogs later you know within a month or two I said it is a shame that it has come to this, meaning something as dramatic as a pandemic to enable people to choose to slow down and spend time within, if they choose, many I'm sure did not, but that's how I felt and that's what I wrote. It is a shame that it has come to this and that's what's being said here. So go ahead. <clears throat> But it's just, yes, I just find it really, um, really, yeah, it just open, opens me up, up a lot listening to this, you know, the languaging of planets and, and terrains, you know, I just, I, I wouldn't have gone there really, to tell you the truth, but, you know, I can see those really in my mind as, 
many of these planets as as you know as as, as the as it was saying about that um they're kind of projects that have kind of been stalled you know haven't gone ahead and so I, you know i was looking at my own life and i could see quite a few planets out there <laughs> <laughs> in my, in my <laughs> and still floating around that actually can be revisited can be yeah. you know <laughs> so you can grow from everything i think it was back in book one actually where there was a chapter that talked about earth is not the most challenging of environments but it is close to the to the most yeah. And there are other environments even more challenging meaning presumably the ratios but uh, but this actually um Judy, this chapter to me was was when I thought about what you just said about <clears throat> tough love, because this was like describing what timeout is about, you know, mm -hmm. it really was about the most loving thing to do. Um, if you choose certain destructive and non loving choices, then you will be excluded. And we'll have to experience them elsewhere. So it's not, this is so interesting. It's not saying you cannot experience those things and continue right. to be destructive and cause havoc, but you will not be allowed to do it here. And that's when you send the child to the room or the corner in the chair and say, exactly. I'm out. Or you can do whatever you want over there, but you will miss the participation of whatever the family is doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think everyone's a bit disappointed that it's not more esoteric and magical, but so <laughs> mundane. <laughs> in our experience <laughs> no, but I think like I mean for me these last year and a half or almost two years of the pandemic and doing journey has just set me in a different world and a new course and envisioning and and what? understanding I can't hear you you know the, being the what? ultimate goal is union oh. with, hmm is that an echo for me? Oh, no, that's um, no. Um, understanding um, that the, the ultimate goal is union with God or discovering who we are, our Christ self. Christ is God in form and mm -hmm. learning to be that and using a whole new language. Being with all of you is, is kind of my family, but it's brought me to live in such peace and joy all the I mean, to gaze out my window, I'm in the most beautiful environment. And it's all here. Love is here. We are creating this. And this is, this will be part of us. This is us moving into the 5D in this beautiful, on this beautiful planet. And what God is doing in this chapter, like you said, Christina, he's, he's laying the parameters a little bit. He's saying, okay, we're enforcing a new policy, free choice. I've never violated that. I've given you free will to do and create as you want, but some of you have taken it and you're using it to do what you want for yourself in the destruction of what I originally intended, a beautiful planet with beautiful loving souls learning who they actually are, right? So I'm not allowing any of you anymore to use your free will to your advantage um, at the expense of the destruction and the destroying of love and all that beauty. So I, I think we will continue moving forward daily in our light. We, we, receive more light, you know, more light. And he's saying, what's going to happen if you don't want to be part of this, but you get to choose because he does say, um, he, he, uh, I'll just read this, like attracts like. We want the premier canvases. And at first, Christine, I thought when in, chap in verse one, premier canvases, I thought of the planet, this beautiful earth, which it is too. This is his creation, but his individual creations also, we are his canvases, we are his art. He is the ultimate artist, right? The art of thought. Um, we want the premier canvases to attract those who are already full, fully realized love beings. That's what we're trying to be here or who are somewhat on the path. Love tolerates everything that isn't love yet. 
you spoke of that, Christina. But due to the volume and destructiveness of everything that isn't love yet, it must find a new home. Simply put, it must be put in a container so that the rest of creation can get on with the business of creating and flourish. No more locked doors, you know, no more resistance. Not, we're not going to have to fight against those walls because they're going to be cut off from this somehow. Mm -hmm. I think we get to move forward in what we're creating here with God. Yeah, and we feel all of this because of who we are with such compassion. The compassion has grown. I think that for me, all of the havoc and destruction and pain has grown my ability to feel great compassion for myself and for everyone. Myself last of all, actually. But um, that whole, um, those words, the last line, flourish, was one word that I just felt a sort of like, to flourish. You know, what would that feel like, to flourish? Not just manage or... Yes you know, try to thrive in a situation that's difficult. Yes. And no more locked doors. I know that can be allegorical, but I took it literally. It's like, imagine a planet. This next creation cycle they had told us is about harmony in a relationship. Harmony in relationship on a planet where you don't have locked doors. How beautiful is that? And that's where I want to be because I feel the compartmentalizing that I have done in a way are boundaries that I, I don't want to carry those. I don't want to, I never have. You know, I want my atoms to flow freely wherever. So I still struggle with that a little bit. Irene, would you like to add anything, love? I'm glad you're here. Oh, well, I'd say, what well, came to me when I first, when I heard that, I thought, oh, great. <laughs> you know, that's certainly a world I want to live in. When they get it, they can't do all the bad things they're doing now. And then it occurred to me, and I can't be judgmental. Huh. <laughs> hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, something about me has to change too. Mm -hmm. And, um, um, so, um, it, it, um, it, 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 it's a different, it's an interesting, um, idea, this whole idea that God is still creating and, um, because, you know, what I, the religion I was brought up in, um, you know. God was done and, you know, and we were never going to make it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But the idea that God is still creating, I won't say by our example is the wrong, but looking at it, God, and oftentimes I call it it because otherwise I get the, the old man with the beard <laughs> and you know when I say he yeah, yeah. and because English doesn't have a word for he she well, I think they is the new language isn't it I try and remember to say they yeah they so that's um, interesting yeah sorry the creating sorry you were they were yeah, constantly that, creating that, yeah that the creation is still creating is um yeah a very mm, Lovely and yet, I won't say scary. That's wrong, but but certainly um, something I have to give thought to. Mm -hmm. um, idea, mm -hmm. um, and that by my actions are part of that. Why it's still creating? Yes, you know that that. Um, you know, okay, I will create a uh, mankind or person kind, and then they will, and they went way beyond what to think that they went way beyond what God had in mind when we were 
when we created ourselves. Um, you know, I mean, um, this, the, the group that I'm in right now talking talks about this without making ourselves look crazy. But if you, if it was just an other group of people and you were talking in this way that creation is, is continuing and that, you know, that it surprised God that we, some of the stuff we did, you know, they would send us away. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's why we have these dialogue groups that are so grateful to Lorraine for for starting another one. And I'm hoping more people will come forward and do that because yeah, you're right, Irene. And it is a little scary because then you, I feel on my own, I'm sure you feel on your own. So it's important to feel that we're in this together. And the scary part is that once we recognize that we are creating, you and I are co-creating right now, Irene, heart to heart, looking into your eyes, loving you, this flowing that's happening is a creation of more love. And um, it can be scary for a lot of people because it means you're very powerful. And for a lot of people, we prefer to have someone to blame, you know? So easy, it's so much easier. Oh, God did that, you know? Oh, he did that, she did that, whatever. Anyway, so I'm glad you're here. And yes, hopefully there'll be more conversations going on. And, and the other thing is we're always doing this by example. So I just don't talk about it. Pardon you know, me? I just don't talk about it. We're doing it by example, by being the example. Right. Mm -hmm. with people. Oh, yes. You know, we just, I know when I talk to my girlfriends every week, I just talk about the children and dinner and food and parties and trips. And that's all I talk about, but I'm loving them all the time. Mm -hmm. Blowing that love, you know? So, yeah, I think we need to recognize too that you know, this, this great shift that's been taking place that was even prophesied, you know, the age of Aquarius, uh, the 2012 Mayan calendar, you know, the creating anew, which we learned in a course of love. We've all been part of that. We have been called and, you know, the declarations and the di desires of our hurt, hearts that were out there in the ethers because we've pursued love. We've, it's, I've always been the theme of my life, the inner world, the inner, you know, how we behave, how we love others, how we treat others. So we've been part of, we're recognizing that we are a part of the experiment in a new way. We've been called forth to be the examples, creating, you know, that old way that Irene, you were describing where we were raised, um, God was this and we were that and our fate was sealed and we were never going to be good enough. We were never going to make it. We were sinners and, you know, our just due was coming. But that, that we are in these exciting times where we are the shift. Mm -hmm. We are part of it at each as um, what, what does God call it? The canvases. We are pre premier canvases as individual souls and as a group at, at, in part of the new creation. So right. we're getting it as best we can. We're responding as best we can. We're called to be examples. Mm -hmm. And we are a, a part of, of the new creation. Yeah, in a way, we're here because of us. Yes. Yeah, because right. of us. Mm -hmm. that's the thing to remember that it is the timing is perfect for each one of us and we've been preparing our all many lifetimes to be here so uh, that's everything is perfect and in the moment everything is right there so so let's uh, <clears throat> bumble on to the next uh, chapter 38 um, the cat is out of the bag didn't you all love the picture I found Yes. <laughs> it's kind of adorable kitty. <laughs> I don't think I can show it to you, but maybe for those who haven't seen, let me try. Yeah. Can you see that picture? Oh yeah. It's the most adorable cat out of the bag. So, the bag. <laughs> so the cat's out of the bag. So let's see. I am will change. My benevolence has to be reigned in. Reigning in one's benevolence is not a concept I had ever thought of. 
Go ahead, anyone. Jump in. Julia. Judy. The only thing I've been thinking about this is that, yeah, yeah like um, we, we, we're thinking about people who are mainly people who are so negative and who are very much into their own egos, et cetera. But I'm also thinking of ourselves in that maybe there's also parts of us too that um, we wrestle with in terms of our own negativity, hmm. our, own, uh, our own need to maybe contain those parts of ourselves. And like I say, enough is enough. You know, like sometimes you can, you can easily get seduced by your own negativity and you can go down that garden path where, where everything is going wrong and, and, you know, and you just feel sorry for yourself. It's so easy to do. So we, maybe we have to take uh, God's example here and contain our own um, negative parts too, and, and be on the watch and be on the lookout and mm -hmm. set our own boundaries to for our own selves as well. Right. That's a really good point. I'm so glad you said mm -hmm. that. Because, and for, for me, just to my own experiences, it's less about containing it as being willing to look at it. So mm -hmm. I have been pretty shocked the last six weeks. I'm working with someone who's a soul coach and the things I haven't looked at the grief and the tears that have flowed for things that have been locked away as A Course of Love says, as museum pieces that have been subtly and invisibly influencing the way I feel about myself and the quality of love that I can bring to my work and to people. It has been unbelievable. I, I will just say this and let it be at that. I haven't wept so much as I have over the last five days. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't need to know logically exactly what it's about, but it is the grief is healing. So it's parts of me that have been locked away. So not that I've even known about them to contain them, but I've been walking by ignoring them. But, but I think things have, you know, every. Everything can't come into your mind at once. No, it would probably just. No, it would. Me. You know, it's it's yeah. difficult enough that it comes sparingly, creepingly in. Exactly. Um, because when you get too much at once, and sometimes that happens, you're on a roll, and you think, "Oh, I can take it all." Well, no, and um, so for me. Uh, just the other day, I uh, something popped into my mind. It appeared out of the blue. Somebody had said something about something um, on one of these chats. Oh, I think it was. Well, anyway, something came to me that I believed I had healed many, many years ago. And all of a sudden, I saw another mm -hmm. way to see that that was so much more loving. And, but I don't know that back when I healed it in the first place, even if I had seen this part, I could have accepted it or would have understood it. Mm -hmm. So I think things come to us when we're ready to, when we're ready in consciousness right. to accept them because they probably come all along. It's probably not b between now and 30 years ago when the thing happened, or 40 years ago, it's actually when my mother died, um, that it, it's probably been suggested to me many times since, and I completely missed it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. and, but this time I was ready. And I swore it and I went, oh, it didn't negate what I had said before. It just enhanced it in a way that was way more loving. Right. And so I think that when we're ready for that and for us not to judge ourselves or make, well, why didn't I do this sooner? Absolutely. You yeah. know, and totally. so just know that when we're ready in consciousness, it'll come. And mm -hmm. since everything is happening at once, which uh, I remind myself when I get on my, why didn't I think of this sooner? Yeah, so true. Well, it's all happening at once, so it is sooner. 
So yeah. true, so true, so true. And I think even in the last newsletter a couple of weeks ago, I wrote something like it's like revisiting places I thought were already squeaky clean. And it, but it's like detailing and polishing the last, you know, when I say last, oh my God, don't say that because who knows? <laughs> I mean, even God is changing, so who knows? But whatever it is, you're absolutely right, Irene. That's perfect. And thank you so much, Judy, for, for saying that. That is so, so important. So important. Um, anyone else? And or we can move on to the next chapter. Just yeah. that, um, you know, God in this chapter 38, you know, the darkness, the destructiveness, the the dark consciousness, he, he um, does use sickness, you know, and he talks about cancer. Mm -hmm. So when he says, I will change, just as you have been speaking, Irene, and we're talking, of, and yourself, Christina, we're looking at those museum pieces. Mm -hmm. God is saying at the macro level, um, I will have large regions of myself that are cancer free, and regions where the cancer can be intensively treated and healed everyone and everything is part of me and we've been talking about those parts of ourselves that are the cancers or the sickness but god uh in, talks about it here the containment will be the cancer parts and they they will get healed they can be intensively treated and healed everyone and everything is part of me therefore if one part of me is sick so am i how could God be sick and why should God endure sickness in order to be benevolent? This is an ethical question, which we have wrestled with since time began. So I guess what I'm trying to say here, you know, our little cancers, the cancer of the world is his cancer too. And it's, we're done now. We're, we're going to get this healed. We have to work on this. Everything, everything we each do counts every every mm -hmm. attending within is the I, I mean i can't think of anything more important you know which is really being in that place of applying the art of thought to whatever's in front of us and noticing the full experience as a human being is a starting place mm -hmm. that's really what's most revealing yeah wonderful all right well let's go on to chapter 39 which talks about deprogramming. This is the chapter that says, uh, and this was actually very, let me just quickly say what was so fascinating to me. Um, because we're so susceptible to influence, rounding up those involved in the daily continuation of the great cover-up, which is covering up of the truth, will have a great effect. And then it talks about um, whether they are incarnate or disincarnate, there will be a major escort to the hinterlands for intensive treatment. So that was kind of a new thought for me, that it's not just human beings mm -hmm. who need to be contained, but there are also unseen beings, disincarnate beings that are also misbehaving to use a simple word. And all of it is so that not only can they heal of their inflated egos, but the rest of creation can heal from their negativity in equal measure. Yeah, Lorraine and I were speaking last night that, that I always thought that once you died, um, you sort of became enlightened and everything was, um, you, you realized everything and you just became this loving entity once you die. And this tells me that no, <laughs> your, your spiritual consciousness that you left with when you left the earth, you're gonna keep it over there and right, you're still right. gonna have to learn. Right. You're still right. gonna have to grow once you've passed the, onto the other side. So it's not gonna be, you know, a bed of roses on the other side. We're still going to have to grow mm -hmm. and learn and 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 deal with all the negativity that we've had because you're still going to have it with you mm -hmm. on the other side. Right. So I, I I'm kind of with you, but the part that surprised me, Judy, 
yes, I kind of thought that, yeah, you'd still have it on the other side, but I thought that it would be a little more contained. They wouldn't be able to wreak havoc on the other side. Oh, I see. That's yeah. the thought that surprised me, that they were still wreaking havoc somehow, presumably through human beings, through- I think probably that through human probably beings. Probably yeah. by influencing or having some degree of influence. Yeah, Julia, say some more about that. How do you feel about that? Well, I mean, that's just what I, that I, I mean, I think I have sort of, um, you know, it's funny because I, I, part of me, you know, there's all the theories that have been out there for so long, the grays and all this kind of stuff, yeah, and all yeah. the influencing. And I don't really subscribe to any of that. And so I was surprised when this came in. It was like, whoa, here we are. <laughs> you know, there are, he's saying this. Yes, it's true. Um, but I think after the chapters that came before it, mm -hmm. it made sense. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, OK, I guess that, you know, it's not so surprising and when i think about it it's sort of it's the way i think about maybe my own um you know if i'm having thoughts that are just you know obsessive thoughts that will not go away if i stop listening to them then they dissipate you know it's like that attention and and you know to me this is what he's saying here is that um that we are so susceptible to influence. And so if there's all this noise and all this, you know, sort of incoherence that is around and constantly being emitted and, and in the environment that we're living in, it's very difficult to not be persuaded by it. Um, and so just eliminating the noise, separating it off is what's going to allow so many more people to go, oh mm -hmm. wait you know like i'm i'm having different thoughts now and you know it, it's like it, it just allows people to remember who they are so much more easily and yeah. um yeah. so it, it's just taking some of the attention off of the the distraction right. really right. um and so i i am i'm actually i, I think it's amazing to think about it's it. almost you know as you were speaking julia i kept thinking of it's like clearing the airwaves. Exactly. It's like clearing some frequencies. Exactly. It's like noise. tuning the station better. Yes. You know, yes. it's, it's like eliminating like frequencies that are distorting and, and, and influencing. Exactly. And uh, that is how we can thrive, I guess. You know, Absolutely. The, not thrive. What was the word? Flourish. Yeah. Flourish. That's how we're going to be able to flourish. You know, there are, and there are others, you know, more in the sort of new agey language or whatever. Um, and I don't have that language, but there are a couple of young people I really respect in what they say. And they've talked about it very much like this, mm -hmm. that it's time and that these signals are being stopped and it takes a while for them to die down. Mm -hmm. And they have already been stopped and mm -hmm. they are dying down. Mm -hmm. And our ability to tune into love, that's you know growing mm -hmm. because of the absence of these signals. And, you know, Lorraine also wanted to say when you talked about this whole larger picture, you know, 2012 and the birth of the new earth and so on. Um, there is one young man that I respect a great deal that talked about we're actually like two or three years behind schedule because something happened like it's almost like in 2019 we were supposed to be where we are now, but things got a little bit mm. <laughs> out of whack and we've had a terrible time these last two years, but we're kind of there <laughs> now. He says that the the new year 2022 is the year of um, discovery, is what he says, and that it actually started on November 28th, mm -hmm. and that we are going to move at a, in an accelerated rate now. So I just wanted to throw that in for a little imaginative hopefulness <laughs> to keep on keeping on, you know, because it can get kind of tiring. Yeah. Can get tiring. Well, thank you for that, Julia. Um, I guess we have one more chapter. Oh, it's already 12. Can we hang on for a few minutes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is the next chapter. Um, anybody want to talk about anything that jumped out for them? It is the final chapter in the book. Mm -hmm. We did talk about it a bit at the beginning. Well, he, he does tell us, um, it, or did I surmise this from what I read, number one? So God's first communication to mankind as I am, it's so direct. We are hearing from 
source, right? Um, that kind of blew me away. It says, in my first communication to mankind, in verse one, my purpose has now, or has been to explain how each reader is connected to me and the big picture. So that I took to heart. Thank you, God, right? Um, that, and then I don't want the idea of God to remain a mysterious idea. If you are part of God, then you should be familiar with basic details surrounding your heritage. So I thought about that, my heritage, and I'm thinking of my human lineage. Know, Lorraine, who you are as a soul, your spirit, you know, know that you are divine. Because the, the, those, like in chapter 29, those that are making the noise that you spoke about, they, they know at some level there's goodness and a divine divinity but they want to keep us from that because they want control of the world they want control of us believing the falsity that's been created you know um so we need to know our true heritage i mean some of us know we we've had regression we know we're old souls we know we've lived in other places we and we need to hang on to that dearly and continue continue to be who we are and learn who we are as divine sons of, and daughters of the source and then what else but um Oh, I think in a way, the whole thing I sum surmised or summed it up as, you know, we are being put to the test it, as, you know, the human race is being put to the test. You're going to now you need to choose the path of God or you need to know you're both divine and human or um, you can stay in that human dark world where you want to fight with others for control, where you want the powerful to be the powerful, where you want to continue to be greedy, to have it, to have it all. God is saying, no, no more. Enough is enough. That's not going to continue. And you do need to do your part. That's where he's saying our, our plan to fix or our plan to fix our plan is drastic and all aspects of the divine hierarchy are fully committed to it. Will it be easy? No. Will we succeed? We hope so. There's no guarantee in creation. Very little has developed as planned because we have to do our part. Mm -hmm. We have to be the divine beings we are to co-create. And so all of us, in spite of what we believe or don't believe, doesn't matter to God what we believe or don't believe whether we're vaxxed or not vaxxed, or are you, or, are, you know, that is meaningless, right? doesn't matter what we believe. Most of our beliefs are faulty. They're not true. Because, but, but now we're being put to the test. You're either both son of man, both son of God. You're both human divine. And, and we're focusing on that divine part now. That's the part of love. That's the part of compassion. Or, or you can remain as human as you want to be. So that mm -hmm. you, you get to choose. But I so a full circle back to what you had said, Lorraine and Judy, about there is no time. This is not one big event. Mm -hmm. This is literally every quantum now moment. Mm -hmm every quantum now moment, and that is the art of thought. Recognizing our experience as a human being, recognizing our divinity, allowing that feeling of relationship to flow between the two, and then responding as love, as human yes. and divine, because dialogue creation is a dialogue that has yet to be responded to something like that in the course of love and when we respond we are creating so that's kind of where we are with all of this right. and to grow the love to create these auras that's our purpose that's the purpose that's but we don't even have to think about that in the moment right. we simply respond with love and knowing that that is the larger right. purpose has been amazing i think that's what's been beautiful for me about the mm -hmm. whole of Secrets of the Unknown is having this larger mm -hmm. context for what I am already mm -hmm. striving to do and feeling more supported and more part of something much larger that mm -hmm. gives it meaning, you That's know, that being witnessed and giving it meaning. And the thing is that we are now recognizing it and 
functioning or I want to say living, but from that consciousness, whereas before, even myself, we were on autopilot. And so, um, and maybe not living badly, I'm not saying, you know, I was doing all kinds of bad things, but I wasn't consciously conscious of everything that I was doing all the, all of the time. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and so now we just, you know, I'm not slapped and said, look at how good you, but tapped on the shoulder kind of now and said, you know, this is the, the way is the better way or the right way for you to be going. You know, I think we're just kind of tapped on the shoulder to be told that what we are doing is what we should be doing. Right, right. right. There's something you just brought to mind, Irene, that uh, about the interplay of mindfulness and wholeheartedness. Mindfulness is, a, is an ancient concept that comes from, you know, Buddhism and other things and meditation practices and so on. But my, I think it's in A Course of Love that talks about mindfulness helps us remember who we are and wholeheartedness is to help us, it helps us be who we are, live as who we are. So the remembering, calling in all the help I can get to remember each moment is huge for me. Because when we do remember, we, we do respond appropriately. So when we forget, and that's always been the case, hasn't it? Just, just one little thing about, um, because I believe that when we part company with the earth, when our body say dies, um, that we, where we go, we take ourselves with us, that we take our consciousness with us. So when, when Rick has been, you know, writing the Sunday things with all the quotes from the, you know, well-known people who have passed, so we all know who they are. And they're talking like they did the day before they died. It, I think it's really you know, says to me, yes, what I, what you believe is you take yourself with you. You know, you, you, they may be coming from a slightly more loving place, or, but but they're still remembering, yeah, well. Um, yeah, in varying know. degrees. They're all had very different responses. That's true. Some hadn't changed at all. Some, one hadn't even left the earthly realm. They only mm -hmm. just rejoined the the, the celestial realms in 2013, someone who died a decade earlier. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, so I'm saying to myself, clean it up here because you're yeah. going to take it with you. That's right. You, you so know, that's you that's what they're saying to us, exactly. You don't, yeah. die, you don't die and get a clean slate. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. might as well make the choice. You get now. your own slate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we're coming up for 1210. I just wanted to thank you all. And everyone who's joined these, you know, it's been a wonderful series. And actually, just yesterday, I think, I didn't have a chance to read it properly, but someone wrote a comment on YouTube on last week's uh, conversation saying how helpful it was to listen to us talk about really these chapters, you know, because it is hard to kind of sit on your own and just read it or listen to it and get it. So, so I think these are going to continue to be valuable for people who discover the YouTube channel or discover these books. Um, so thank you. This is the last of these dialogues. We've completed um, Secrets of the Unknown. And just to say, Journey into the Unknown is completed. I have been bringing things to conclusion bit by bit. And I'm putting out a newsletter this Saturday, the 1st of January, which will say a little more about this completion and how I feel. But thank you. It's well, been thank wonderful. You. Thank you. And here's to a bright and beautiful and luminous 2022. Yes. Yes. And we, thank yes. you so much, Christina. Thank you for what you've done for all of us. Oh. But we're not finished. Um, I do <laughs> in my little reflections that I put out, you know, I think of, of the Christ cells that we've come to be and that they're planted all over the world and just with what you shared with us about those that we help i think well you know we have we don't seem to have doubled and tripled in numbers but we, we don't know who we've been we don't know we, who we're transmitting to and when the airwaves are clear yes cells that are transmitting transmitting 
that's it's an right. So there's, time. Who knows what? And, God, and yes, and uh, Jesus tells us there's so many Christ offices. He calls oh. them planted all over. So we continue to grow. We continue on, and we're not complete. And uh, hopefully, I'll see some of not you at all. Um, in January 12th on our Who Knows Where Love Will Will Take exactly. Us. Yeah. yeah. But yes. thank you for everything, thank Christina. You. Thank you very much. Love, Love you all. all. Love mm, likewise. Bye-bye. Bye. Happy holidays. Not yes. over yet. Happy New Year. Bye -bye. Yeah, happy New Year. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.